Okay, well, let's get on to talking about youth mental health because so much to address there. Uh, and I know that you have given the assessment that what we're currently in is is something of a, a youth mental health pandemic, even as we come out of the COVID pandemic. Um, can you unpack for us some of the challenges you're seeing at the moment uh, when you look at uh, what young Americans are facing in terms of their mental health? Yeah, I, I'm deeply worried, Paige, about the mental health of young people in America right now. We are in the midst of a crisis, and we have been for many years, even though it hasn't always made the headlines or been top of mind for people. But what COVID did is it really pulled back the curtain on just how severe the mental health uh, yeah, epidemic is in the United States, particularly among youth. And th there are three numbers, Paige, that always stick in my head. One is the number 11. That's the number of years it takes on average for a child to receive treatment after developing symptoms. The second number is 57. That's a percentage increase in the suicide rate that we had among kids in the decade prior to the pandemic. And this got worse for a number of kids during the pandemic. And the other number that I remember is 42 percent. Uh, that's a percentage of high school students. Uh, sorry, 44 percent. That's a percentage of high school students who say they are they feel persistently sad or hopeless. And think about it, we think of high school as a time where your life is opening up for you, uh, but nearly half of high school kids are feeling despondent about themselves and about the future. So these, to me, uh, stick in my head because they give me a snapshot of where we are. And it's echoed by the conversations I have with young people all across the country who routinely tell me uh, that they are struggling with anxiety or depression, uh, many of whom also tell me that their experience of social media often leaves them feeling worse about themselves and about their friendships. And finally, I think it's important not to lose sight of the experience of parents here as well. And I say this as a dad myself. I have two small kids who are four and five. And my interest in this topic of youth mental health is, is you know, partly motivated by them. I think about their future. I want to make sure that they are well. Um, but when you, I talk to parents across the country, they are struggling right now. They are dealing with their own, their own anxieties and worries, whether it's about COVID, economic worries, et cetera. But they're also worried about their kids. And I'll tell you that one of the worst feelings that you can have as a parent is to see your kids struggling and to not be able to get them the help that they need. And that is a situation that many parents are in. With all of that said, though, Paige, the good news is we can do something about this. It does not have to be this way. And we, in fact, know much of what we have to do. We know we've got to expand access to treatment and we know how to do that. We know that we've got to increase the workforce of people who can provide and deliver mental health care. And we know we have got to invest in prevention and prevention programs, especially that are school-based that we know work. And finally, we've got to shift our culture uh, around mental health as well to one that uh, is not so imposing of this terrible stigma uh, on mental health. It doesn't make people feel ashamed uh, to ask for help. These are things we can do, we've already started to do. We've got to accelerate because there are millions of children who are struggling right now and they can't wait any longer.